we're going to use the washer method to determine the volume of the solid formed when the region bounded by y equals two times the square root of x, y equals zero, and x equals four is rotated about x equals five. So because the axis of rotation is a vertical axis, we'll be using this formula here to determine the volume. Where well, the volume is equal to pi times the integral from c to d of the square of big R of y minus the square of little r of y integrated with respect to y. So because we have a vertical axis of rotation, we integrate with respect to y, and the outer radius and inner radius must both be expressed as a function of y. So let's first graph the bounded region and look at the solid when rotating about x equals five. So the blue graph is y equals two times the square root of x. This green horizontal line is y equals zero, and this green vertical line is x equals four. So this yellow region is the bounded region, which will rotate at about x equals five, this axis here. Which notice how it would give us this volume on the right. So our goal is to find this volume using the washer method. Before we set up the integral, notice how the vertical line x equals four intersects the graph y equals two times the square root of x at the point four comma four. So for this bounded region, the interval for x would be from zero to four, and the interval for y would also be from zero to four. And we'll use a closed interval from zero to four for y for our limits of integration because we are going to integrate with respect to y. And it's always helpful to sketch a representative rectangle to help us set up the integral We'll use this representative rectangle shown here in red, where if we were to rotate this rectangle about the axis of rotation, it would give us one washer volume of the solid. Whenever using the disc or washer method, we sketch the rectangle perpendicular to the axis of rotation. And notice how the thickness of this rectangle would be delta y, once again verifying we integrate with respect to y. And now let's work on determining big R of y and little r of y. Big R of y is the outer radius, which should be the distance from the axis of rotation to the corresponding point on the blue graph, which would be this distance here. So this is big R of y. Notice how big R of y is controlled by y equals two times the square root of x. So because you need big R of y to be a function of y, we'll have to solve this equation for x. Let's do that now. So if y is equal to two times the square root of x, and we divide both sides by two, we can say the square root of x is equal to y divided by two. Now we can undo the square root by squaring both sides, which would give us the equation x equals y squared divided by two squared, or y squared divided by four. So this equation here is equivalent to the original equation, as long as we're assuming y is greater than or equal to zero. Now we can use this to determine big R of y. Notice how the distance from the axis of rotation to the y-axis would be five units. So big R of y would actually be five units minus this horizontal distance here, controlled by the function y equals two times the square root of x, which is the same as x equals y squared divided by four, which means big R of y is equal to five minus y squared divided by four. Again, this gives us the distance from the axis of rotation to the y-axis minus the distance from the y-axis to the blue function, which gives us big R of y. And now little r of y is much easier, it's the inner radius. And notice how the distance from this region to x equals five is a constant, it's always equal to one unit. Or again, this would be little r of y, which is just equal to one. So we know little r of y is equal to one. And now we have all the information we need to find the volume. The volume v is equal to pi times the integral from zero to four. Remember this would be the interval along the y-axis of this bounded region. And then we have the square of big R of y, which would be the quantity five minus y squared divided by four squared minus little r of y squared, which would be one squared integrated with respect to y. So this integral will give us the volume of the solid. Let's evaluate this on the next slide. Let's first square this binomial. So we have the quantity five minus y squared divided by four times the quantity five minus y squared divided by four. So multiplying, we'd have 25, and then we'll have minus five fourths y squared minus another five fourths y squared. That'd be negative 10 
fourths y squared or minus five halves y squared. And finally we have plus one sixteenth y to the fourth. So we have pi times integral from zero to four of, again we have 25 minus five halves y to the second plus one sixteenth y to the fourth minus, of course one squared is just one. So you only have two like terms, 25 minus one of course is 24. So now let's find the antiderivative. The integral of 24 with respect to y would be 24y. And then here we're going to have minus five halves times y to the third divided by three, that'd be minus five six y to the third plus here we'll have one sixteenth times y to the fifth divided by five. Sixteen times five is eighty, so we have one eightieth y to the fifth. Now we need to find big F of B minus big F of A. So when y is equal to four, we have twenty-four times four minus five six times four to the third plus one eightieth times four to the fifth. And then notice when y is zero, all the terms would be zero. So simplifying, we have pi times the quantity. Well, 24 times four is equal to 96. Five six times four to the third is equal to 160 thirds. And 1 80th times four to the fifth is equal to 64 fifths. This simplifies to pi times 832 fifteenths. So the exact volume is 832 pi divided by 15 cubic units. If we want a decimal approximation using the calculator, we'd have 832 pi divided by 15, which would give us approximately 174.2537 cubic units. So here we have both the exact and approximate volume of the solid formed by rotating this yellow region about x equals five, where the solid is shown here. I hope you found this helpful.